Another dividend stock that's currently offering investors an insanely high yield is Starbull Carriers, which is ticker symbol SBLK. I've gotten comments from people asking if I'm familiar with this stock, probably because according to Google and all these financial websites like Seeking Alpha, CNBC, and Yahoo Finance, their stock now offers an insanely high yield of over 32%. It's also performed quite a bit better than the market in general as a whole last year, which I'm sure has made more people curious about it. So in today's video, we're going to take an in-depth look into this stock and try and determine if Starbull Carriers might be a good dividend stock for your portfolio. Starbull Carriers is a shipping company that engages in the ocean transportation of dry bulk cargoes worldwide. They operate transport vessels that carry a range of major bulks, including ores, coals, and grains. They currently own 128 carriers, ranging from Supermax vessels to Newcastle Max vessels, which typically have an age of 10 years. They're fully integrated, meaning that the company manages both the commercial and the technical side of the business, and they don't need to outsource to a third-party company to manage these functions. Starpool Carriers was founded back in 2006, and they're headquartered in Athens, Greece, and they also have an executive office in Cyprus. These marine shipping stocks have really exploded in popularity over the last two years, and I get lots of comments from people wondering if they're good investments for dividend investors. Some of the other popular shipping stocks out there would include Zim Integrated Shipping, which I recently went over in a video about five weeks ago, Golden Ocean Group, and Diana Shipping Incorporated. What has so many people wondering if these are good dividend stocks all has to do with the fact that they're all offering insanely high dividend yields. Zim Integrated Shipping is currently offering the highest yield out of all of them at 105.53% according to Google, which is insane. But if we look at Starbucks 5-year dividend distribution history, we can see a really inconsistent pattern of dividends being declared. This company didn't declare any dividends for 15 months between March of 2020 and May of 2021. You might be thinking this had to do with the COVID pandemic, but if we expand their history back 10 years, we can see this company actually went 7 whole years without paying their investors any dividends at all. Only recently has this company been paying dividends to shareholders, and they've all been massive for some reason. They've actually had a history of doing some huge reverse stock splits, which I'll touch on later. But let's take a deeper look into why this company has had such an inconsistent dividend distribution history. Over on their website, they have a page that covers their dividend policy, which explains how the company decides what amounts they're going to distribute to shareholders. It says the board may declare a dividend in each of February, May, August, and November in an amount equal to Starbucks' total cash balance minus the product of the minimum cash balance per vessel and the number of vessels. Their total cash balance refers to what's on their balance sheet, and the minimum cash balance per vessel includes vessel sales, proceeds from vessel refinancings, security offerings in the last 12 months earmarked for share repurchases, debt prepayment, vessel acquisitions, and general corporate purposes. Number of vessels refers to the total number of vessels owned by the company, including its subsidiaries, or that are subject to sale and leaseback transactions and finance leases as of the last day of the quarter preceding the relevant dividend declaration date. As you can probably imagine, this is a lot less straightforward than your typical kind of dividend stock. With REITs, for example, they're a lot more predictable with their dividends since most don't have large swings in how many properties they own or how many tenants they have. WP Carry owns 1,390 properties with an occupancy rating of 99.1%. I don't expect them to sell 100 properties or lose 10% of their tenants by next quarter. That just highlights the huge difference there is between marine shipping company stocks and other dividend stocks like REITs and BDCs. The dividend amounts paid by shipping companies are pretty similar to how royalty trusts pay dividends. Royalty trusts are companies that are involved with oil and gas production. Both types of companies only pay dividends depending on whether or not the demand for their goods is surging or not. We all know that over the last year, oil prices have been surging due to a number of factors including inflation and the war in Ukraine. But if we look at the dividend distribution history for a royalty trust, we'll be looking at San Juan Basin Royalty Trust in this example, we can see the amount this stock pays in dividends has correlated to rising fuel costs. As the price of oil goes up, then royalty trusts pay more in dividends, but when oil prices go back down, the amount they pay in dividends also goes down. Shipping companies are typically the exact same way. The reason why shipping companies including Zim Integrated, Diana Shipping, and Golden Ocean have been able to pay such large dividends has to do with surging costs in marine shipping. We know that all throughout 2021 coming out of the lockdowns, there was a massive surge in the demand for marine shipping. Companies like Starbulk were able to charge much higher rates due to there being a limited supply of vessels able to now transport all of these goods companies had stored away in inventory. This was and still continues to be one of the major sources of all the supply chain issues we've been having and what we've been reading about in the news. But going forward, what can we expect in terms of performance for these shipping companies? According to an article in the Wall Street Journal, ocean shipping rates have dropped by more than 60% compared to what shipping rates were back in January of this year. 
The cost to ship a 40-foot container from China to the U.S. stands at $5,400. But back in September of 2021, that exact same shipping box peaked at more than $20,000, which is a major decrease. Now that people have stopped social distancing and governments have lifted restrictions, we're seeing shipping costs fall back to where things were before the pandemic started. Shipping companies have been forced to reduce their prices now that other marine shippers have more workers and ports have more people who can unload shipments faster. We can already see this having an impact on Star Bulk's financial statements. If we look up the company's balance sheet, we can see their cash and equivalents has been going down over the last two quarters. Remember, the number one factor that determines how much this company will pay shareholders in dividends all has to do with how much money is on their balance sheet. It's also important to remember that the company doesn't have to keep the money on the balance sheet. They can choose to use this leftover money to do things like pay down debt, so don't think that higher revenue is automatically going to translate into more free cash on their balance sheet, since they can choose to use it for a lot of different purposes. But if we compare their dividend distributions to the cash on their balance sheet, we can see that they're pretty much correlated. As free cash grows, so does their dividend, but now that it's going back down, so or their dividends going down too. It's also important to know that Starbulk doesn't ship consumer goods unlike other shipping companies, so they don't transport things like cars, clothes, and toothbrushes. Starbulk is a dry bulk company, meaning that their vessels are built to only transport commodities. So this would include things like coal, iron ore, and that sort of stuff. There's two things to keep in mind if you plan on being an investor in this stock. First, you need to make sure that you're well educated on the demand for commodities. I'm not an expert on commodity prices, but you should know that they can be volatile. Experts are predicting that coal should be in a strong position for the time being, seeing how high natural gas prices have gotten. But a second factor to keep in mind is that many world governments are trying to discourage the usage of the things that star bulk transports, or more specifically with coal. Now that many countries are trying to push greener sources of energy, they've been trying to push for more regulations in terms of coal and other commodity usages. Obviously coal and these other resources aren't going to go away, but it's just another factor to keep in mind that some governments are trying to discourage one of the big things that star bulk likes to transport. In their latest investor presentation, it shows that growth in terms of the number of marine vessels in the industry is expected to slow down considerably. So although the company probably won't be expanding too much, they project that it will elevate freight rates which should be good for revenue. So going forward, what should our opinion be on this company? One concerning thing is all this talk about a recession which people say will be completely engulfed in one early next year. Even though Starbulk ships commodities and things like coal that we'll all still need regardless, they would face harder times if we do go into a really serious recession next year. This is probably one of the biggest advantages the company has over some of their rivals because what they ship is pretty crucial for energy and manufacturing. Overall, Starbolt does look like a pretty well-managed company and their stock has done better over the last year than the market has. One thing I haven't been able to figure out is the stock share price performance. If we expand the share price performance of SBLK, we can see that it was once trading at more than $1,000 per share all the way back in 2007. But then it went on a massive decline starting in 2008 and the share price has flatlined for nearly a decade. They have performed some crazy reverse stock splits with a 1 for 15 split happening back in 2013. But I will say that your view of the economy should be the number one reason for buying or avoiding this stock. Do you think we're headed for a serious worldwide recession in 2023? Then Starbolt probably isn't going to be an ideal company for you if you're hoping for more massive dividends. If you think fears of a recession are overblown and the demand for shipping is going to pick up again along with rates, then this could be a good stock worth considering. But for me personally, I'm more of a believer that the economic slowdown is going to continue. And remember, what they pay in dividends varies a lot, so this isn't a consistent paying company. Since I prefer to buy and hold stocks for long periods of time, I don't currently own any marine shipping companies and I just don't have any plans to for the time being.